We do not recommend anyone view this as under the age of 18 without parental consent. Aren't you taking the gritty reboot a little seriously? <laughs> no, man. 36 hours, no sleep. I had a monster. Let's do this. I'm pumped. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. All the show belong to us. Hello and welcome to All Your Shore Belong to Us, home of the viewers review. I'm Feral Wizard 16. And I am a really tired Taborius. Been up for 37 hours now? Uh, anyway, on this episode of All Your Show, we're reviewing Devil May Cry. What are we using as the point system? Oh man, lost souls. Good choice. They're much harder to find and they're more valuable. Take a beloved and established yet floundering franchise like Devil May Cry and give it a facelift and a reboot, or gritty reboot, if you will, and I will, or make it more American. Even before the opening cutscene finishes, you will see the new style direction. And I like to point out that this is the first time that someone other than Capcom has developed a Devil May Cry game. While Capcom is still the publisher, they hire Ninja Theory, you know, those Heavenly Sword and Enslaved guys, to come in and give DMC a revamped look and they really flexed their creative muscles churning out a stylized and intense experience that almost never fires a blank for fans of the franchise there was a lot of skepticism going into this game and those same fans they blanched at the idea of, of a studio other than Capcom stepping in and taking the reins of DMC. I think what scared people the most was the massive style changes that Ninja Theory ushered in. And not only that, but also retelling an existing plot. The only problems arise when they feel the need to bash you over the head that this is a gritty reboot. Nothing left but to grab it by the hair, bend it over and- It starts immediately in the opening cutscene. I can understand adding sexuality into an M-rated game. However, most of the scenes that you see with women are either scantily clad, highly sexualized, or crotch shots. It feels like pandering to fan service instead of actually trying to be mature. The juvenile nature even appears in most of the lines of the script. I am now. There's an instance when Dante is arguing with a 1200-year-old demon that the game goes out of its way to make sure you know that this demon is 1,200 years old and the conversation ends with Dante and her yelling F*** you! F*** you! F*** you! Seriously? Concept gets four lost souls. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Yes, Dante looks different. Yes, on the surface, it's a bad choice. However, they explain the look well through story and setting. Keep in mind, Minions, this is a new series with familiar names. Okay, with that out of the way, this game looks so, so sensational! Not just graphically, but aesthetically. The look is a great blend of what seems like Alice Madness Returns, throw in a little splinter cell for the words on the wall, as well as the movie They Live, Pinch of Shadows of the Damned, and mix in the Ninja Theory's own wonderful take on the DMC universe. And you have yourself one delicious looking cake. I mean game. Sorry. I'm hungry. There's a perfect amount of detail in the character models and the environment. And unlike old DMCs, all the enemies have a uniform look. I really can't tell you how much better this makes the flow. The stages as well look great. But just when you think it may get boring or redundant, BAM! Ninja Theory completely changes the style, and in many cases, even the look of the stage, while still making it look like part of the whole. The Raptor News and the nightclub levels are the best examples of this. While disorienting scenes sound always pulse around you, or looking like part of a live newscast while you fight, it's still pretty thrilling and helps keep the immersion fresh. I cannot stress enough, at no point did the visuals ever break the vibe. The animations, likewise, are just as fluid and awe-inspiring. Or, if you will, awesome. Watching a beautifully articulated combo while a mass of enemies swarm around you is so gratifying. 
No glitches or herky-jerky animations here. It's just much-needed medication for the old eyeballs. Cutscenes are equally beautiful, they just... You know what? I can keep going on. Let me sum it up for you. Visuals, five lost souls. I'd like to take this chance to thank the dev team, you know, the development team, for taking a chance of actually having real bands do the music for the majority of the game. Some games try it, and it really just doesn't work out very well. But Noisia and Combi Christ were amazing choices and delivered fully for the experience. Their unique brands of industrial metal, electronica, I'm not sure what it's called. Let's call it industrial metal then. I mean that as a compliment. It kept the adrenaline pumping throughout the entire game. It never seemed out of place, and it really didn't bother me when I noticed it. It just enhanced and made the whole experience more brutal. The voice actors just did an amazing job. They actually made their characters believable. I don't know who you are or why you have been stupid enough to attack me. And the dialogue wasn't necessarily the best, but they sold a story through their performances. That also counts for the in-game enemy vocals as well. Every foe sounds unique and believable. The Foley sounds, I mean, you know, the sounds in the environment and characters reacting to one another, etc. are all very well done with one major flaw. No matter what weapons you use, even though they have their own sounds, whenever there's a block, parry, or even just a hit, they all have the same sound. So you go ahead and you hit this demon in his fleshy face, and then you hit this demon in his armored gut, and guess what? Same sound. The same sound should not come from demon flesh as it does from steel. Okay, this really wouldn't be that big of a problem, but with the amount of smacketh downeth that occurreth every single second of combat, you just can't help but notice it. All the other sounds do a great job of overcoming that weakness, but it's still noticeable. We wanted to give this a five, but Ninja Theory, I'm sorry, four lost souls. Okay, minions, the game that helped define action adventure and influence all others like it, God of War, I'm looking at you, is back with a brand new development team. Oh man, and they outdid themselves. As a long time fan of Devil May Cry, I gotta admit, I was worried. Like, really worried. Like, wasn't gonna touch the game and probably burn all the copies I found worried. But guess what? Easily the best combo system of any DMC game or any game like it. The fluidity of attacking combined with the new mechanic for switching weapons makes you feel like the most d dirty, c c cruel, brutal, anarchic, savage, s sadistic, s s sensational man alive. Or woman, I suppose. But I'm Talking about Dante, it's about empowerment. And again, oh man, fantastic job, Ninja Theory. The tutorial spread throughout the game is expertly done. This is what we want out of a tutorial. The way they introduce new weapons and then train you to use them before throwing you in the deep end is perfect. Don't misunderstand me. This game can be really hard. But they train you so well through the gameplay that you really feel like you can handle it no matter what the circumstance. All right, guys, let's talk boss fights. <laughs> Man, these things are epic. I am talking mid-90s epic. But even they, they pale in comparison to the well-matched assortment of minions that you will face throughout the game. The flow of this game is so good that every time you think you've got it figured out, they just turn you upside down. Eh, look at that. That's fun. The great mix of platforming thrown in just enhances it and really helps make you think that you're not just in a mindless grind. All right, minions, you ready for the real truth? The largest, the most 
daunting, the most despicable enemy that you will face in this entire game is the savage one-two punch of bad camera and no target lock. Uh, okay, for real. I understand that in this style of game, the camera will sometimes work against you. But the harder this game gets, and the more frantically, or in my case, expertly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I deserve that. Move around, the worse the camera gets. Seriously, that thing is on Mundus's payroll. Don't tell me it's not true, I've seen the proof. Couple this, that when there's a large group of enemies and you need to grab the one with the shield or hit a specific one with a ranged weapon, and you fail miserably countless times uh, because you can't target lock, and it is the biggest challenge in the game, period, done, close the book, finished. Again. This gets worse on higher difficulties, but there is no reason sometimes for a fixed camera angle or again, not being able to target lock. Thank you, God of War, for doing that part right. Oh, and speaking of buttons, I hated, hate, 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 hated the initial button settings for this game. But this is something the Ninja Theory makes okay, and uh, the rest of you developing games for consoles, listen up. Fully customizable controls. Seriously, I can't tell you how much better that made the entire game. Gameplay gets four lost souls. We are restarting the series. All the names are the same, including the weapons. So there is a sense of familiarity, but it is rewritten from the ground up. Honestly, you get more out of it if you know more from the previous games, because the changes are really interesting. Or if you have a basic knowledge of Dante's Inferno, you have a really good idea. Some of the changes, like Sparta, good guy, not bad guy, and Ava, not a human, she's an angel. Now Dante and Virgil are both half demon, half angel, which is called a Nephilim. What is this? Diablo may cry? Stuff like that. The story and the setting do a really good job of explaining why Dante lives in a trailer by a carnival down by the river! Yeah, it does kind of seem like they should have made him a full-blown carny. After that, the story is a pretty straightforward event. Not a lot of intense thought here, but they did borrow a stage from Futurama, so props. It also gets held up pretty badly by the awful script and spoken dialogue. I'm taking you off the air. You think so? I wouldn't bet on it, you little sh The fact that they made Dante a petulant teenager with daddy issues? So this story does its job, but kind of like the part-timer that gets hired for the summer, it doesn't try and excel and go above and beyond. Once you've seen it, you'll be happy, but you will skip every cutscene on subsequent playthroughs. Story? Three Lost Souls. With the great use of the Metroidvania style, you know, get a new power-up, go back to previous levels to access new areas, and a bevy of collectibles which help you level up your abilities. I mean, it's at least a couple of playthroughs. And that is just the beginning. They also introduce new difficulty levels, and not just this, hey, we hit harder and stuff, but here are whole new enemy waves, strategies, and new boss moves, from the Son of Sparta difficulty, to everything dies in one hit, including Dante in the heaven and hell difficulty. Then there's hell and hell. Everything has normal health, except did it Dante, which dies in one hit. That's just did it dirty, man. You know, only the most hardcore gamers are gonna go for that level. Adding concept art, achievement slash trophy hunting, and the replay value is actually pretty nice. But unfortunately, I get the feeling that if you put this game down for at least a week, you would have a really hard time convincing yourself to play it. Not because it's bad, but if you spend a little time away from it, you almost feel like you need a refresher course in the controls and the frenetic combat pace, because the game don't care. Ugh. Thank goodness for training mode. Replay value gets four lost souls. All right, let's sum it up. Concept, four out of five. 
Visuals, five out of five. Audio, four out of five. Gameplay, four out of five. Story, three out of five. Replay value, four out of five. So with a total... Tabor. <laughs> I gotta play Devil May Cry. What? <laughs> Let's finish this and go to bed. Okay, cool. I'm for it. I'm for it. I am against it. So with a total score of 24 out of 30, we say get this game. It is an amazing game. Seriously, if you are a fan of the Devil May Cry series or like action adventure, this combat system is worth it. For that alone. I, I just love the visuals, just looking at everything that goes on in the world. It is a great, great game. Good job. Tell us what you guys thought. Leave a comment down below. Also, while you're looking down there, go ahead and subscribe. Like us on Facebook. All of us, please. <laughs> Stop by uh, All Your Base. Buy, yeah. trade, sell video games. Best prices in town. If you want to see the games we're going to review, go ahead and click here. I'm Fairwizard16. And I'm Taborius. You can't stop the bum rush. And I am an airplane.